Uh, how many times have you said, one day, one day I will explore the jungles of Peru, I'll watch the sunrise over the Serengeti, one day I might even make it to Cornwall. <laughs> it's a really long way from London, isn't it? Now, I'd always said that one day I would like to see more of Europe, but there are so many countries in Europe that I found whenever I tried to choose, it was like going to the milk aisle of the supermarket. I was just debilitated by choice. And so I thought, well, let's give up on choice, you know, and I will, in fact, I will start from my London home, I will set aside a month in my diary, and I will let social media tell me where to go. And I'll begin with a bivvy and a backpack, and I'll just start walking across Europe. Now, I called this grand adventure Beyond My Back Gate, had a hashtag and everything, BMBG, because I'm a firm believer that Beyond our back gates is the world, and it is a shame not to go and explore that at every opportunity. Things started off really well, largely because I had a fantastic bobble hat, and I had some friends, and we stood in my London back garden, and then I realized I didn't actually have a back gate, so we decided that we would climb over my back fence instead, hashtag beyond my back fence. And the general way it worked was that every 24 to 48 hours, I would throw up a post on social media that effectively gave three choices, some time would roll by, the votes would roll in, and at the end of those 24 hours, I would do whatever the general public told me I should do. Now, the first vote was that I should walk to one of the three UK ferry ports. So off I went towards Harwich, had some more friends join me. We went through Essex, where we wild camped, yeah. We briefly considered stopping at this salon and getting a vajazzle. Google that one with caution. But I realized two things quite quickly. One, walking is crap. And two, I was absolutely miserable. And so, of course, I had a little bit of a meltdown because I told everyone that I was going to walk across Europe. And of course, at that point, I think everyone's watching me. I did that crying thing, you know, when you go, <gasps> I did that. And then I invoked the second rule of adventure, which is if you don't like something, change it. So I got in Super Stace. There he is with his majestic beard and his white adventure wagon. And he brought my beautiful pink bicycle called Boudicca to me. So I set off with the tarmac beneath my wheels. I had the wind in my hair. I had a very strange man waiting in the dark for me for three hours at the ferry port with a trifle. And he told me to lick it. That was odd. It became quickly apparent that the people of social media were starting to form these packs. And there was a team called Team North, and they looked like this in the picture. They were pretty evil. And bearing in mind, I was, it was February and I had a bivvy bag. They were trying to send me north to Scandinavia. So I started giving choices that were just east, west, or south. My adventure, my rules, bitches. On I went, all across the Netherlands, into Germany, across Switzerland twice, down through France. I was meeting politicians, plumbers, firemen, students. I took a longboarding lesson. I got a tour of a castle. I met a whole host of people, and there were some people in Germany who were um, just a little bit hairier than I'd expected at times. <laughs> that was in the Black Forest. Now, what is the Black Forest famous for? Come on. Oh, yes, we cannot spell it, but we love to eat it, gatto. So I'd been banging on about Black Forest gatto for at least two days before I hit the Black Forest. And this beautiful woman, she wasn't hairy at all, called Maria, she took me into her home, and she said that she'd been queuing up for two straight hours at the local bakery to get me this giant wadge of gatto, which I was delighted was the size of my head. It was a bit weird, because she did just sit there and watch me eat it, because she didn't eat cake at all. So she just watched me enjoy this gatto. I loved it. And there were all kinds of people that took me into their homes. They'd just contact me, like this artist. She said, Anna, can I, can I paint your picture? I think I want to paint you. And I, I thought, yeah. I looked at this, and I thought, God, I look resplendent. <laughs> Can I? So I posted it all over social media. And then my friend, very quickly afterwards, posted this. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now, I wanted to do this adventure because I wanted to see what it was like not to feel physically uncomfortable for once, but actually just to be mentally uncomfortable. You know, what did that feel like? And it was agony. I was wriggling in my skin for most of it because in a world that is full of chaos, I'm constantly trying to find some kind of certainty and control. But with every sunrise that happened on that adventure, I just began to relax. I began to be okay with the messiness of it all. And I found that because I couldn't actually fixate on what was ahead of me, then I was being forced to live in the day to day and in that moment, in the now. And so I thought, well, what can I learn? You know, what can I learn from all these people that are cannonballing into and out of my life? So when I met Francoise and Albert in a little town called Avion in France, and I learned that they had been together for 35 years, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to ask them what the secret is to everlasting love. And Albert, he thought for a long time, deep thinking man, he said, mm, Anna, I think without a doubt, it is my rough, manly hands and my special raspberry sauce. <laughs> there you have it, everlasting love. So in, in the journey, I did 1,327 miles. There were over 1,000 votes cast by the lovely people of social media. I spent 28 nights away from home. And in those 28 nights, there were 24 of them where I was taken in by random strangers. Beyond your back gate is the world. And who knows what you find out there? You might find strange men with trifles, hairy cows, giant wadges of cake the size of your face. But you will never know until you go. Good luck. <laughs>